I think that the police and crime prevention authorities more general, generally need to think about the problem of place a lot more than they do now. Place provides a tremendous place in this micro conception that I'm talking about, one street segment, two, three together, of these hot spots. They provide a, uh, a tremendous opportunity for crime prevention. And a great deal of the crime problem can be understood in the focal point of place. I think as a, as a scientist, uh, one task is to identify the important directions to go in. There's always a limited amount of time and effort and talent, and uh, one of the uh, most important tasks is to identify the directions that are important to go in. Well, the idea of, of looking at hotspots really began in one of my first studies. I was a graduate student at Yale University finishing my PhD, and I was working at the Vera Institute of Justice in New York City. And they had developed a pilot study in community policing. And the pilot study involved nine police beats, each police beat between 12 and 30 square blocks, which is sometimes a, a relatively large area. And I walked the street with these police officers uh, for a year. Uh, you learn an awful lot about all kinds of elements of policing. Every researcher should have to make the scene and walk the street with the police. I began to see something at the very beginning that surprised me from what I had learned earlier. Uh, the program was uh, developed to identify beats, large areas where there were lots of problems, as if the whole area was problematic. But when I'd walk the beats with them, there'd only be a few street blocks that had any problems at all. The serious crime problems were located on just a few places within those larger worlds uh, of beats. And when the cops were asked to do something about the crime problem, that's where they went. So we spent all our time. A guy would have a 30 square block beat, and we'd spend all our time in two streets. I don't even remember that now, if I think about it, the other streets. I remember those two blocks. That uh, experience uh, led me to this curiosity. I, I saw a contradiction between the, the large worlds that seemed to fascinate criminologists and higher echelons in the police, precincts, beats, criminologists, neighborhoods, communities, and these very small worlds of an individual street or two where crime was most intense. That led me to my interest in hotspots and the Minneapolis hotspots experiment, which Larry Sherman and I conducted uh, in the uh, early 1990s. But when I was out with one of the cops uh, one day, he said to me, he said, what are you doing? He said, crime is just moving around the corner. Uh, and that led to my next set of interests, which was, wait a minute, does crime just move around the corner? To move somewhere else means going to a place where you don't know the scene. You don't know who's gonna call the police and who won't. You don't know who might be dangerous and crazy and who isn't. Uh, it's unfamiliar in the same way that if you were to move neighborhoods, at the beginning it's unfamiliar and uncomfortable. One uh, prostitute in a study who did in Jersey City uh, said to us when a interviewer uh, asked her, well, why don't you just move to a prostitution area just eight or nine blocks away. She said, those are not my type of girls. Place is a particularly critical uh, part of the problem of policing, and that police and crime prevention agencies uh, need to recognize.